Hey, oh, Chris, Leisure Games. Let's do this. So, news roundup. The games that need to be on your radar, why, the news events overall that are going on in the industry, and everything else in between, including the hotness on Borging Geek that I'm going to break down and discuss with you everything you need to know. From the person you tolerate on the channel you're okay with. Let's do this. So, first up, we are going on the slightly controversial, but we're going with Simon's latest upcoming Kickstarter crowdfunding campaign yet to be determined, I would imagine in the next week or two, depending on how many designer diaries they're going to put out, and the fact that they don't usually announce uh, this, nor the Kickstarter preview page or launch page too much beforehand nowadays, and this is Cyberpunk 2077, where they have designated this already as a tabletop import of Project CD Red's well-known infamous video game. Now, the video game came with some high expectations and came out to mixed opinions and reviews since then, but how do you adapt a tabletop game that is, uh, you know, similar more to Elder Scrolls Skyrim and less multiplayer? Well, what you do is you instead take a group of protagonists, you make them gangs, and you use gang warfare in an area control style mechanism as they're doing here over six different areas on the map. Now, they said that they were even considering in this designer diary breaking these larger areas up into smaller ones, but they decided ultimately not to based on other area control games that are able to manage quite well with only a few different areas. Now, there's going to be a market. There are going to be many familiar names and titles in terms of the cyberpunk aesthetic and theme and video game side if you are familiar with that netrunners techies fixers and you're going to be dealing with firefights firefights in which they've had to also take a different approach as they have not been a winner take all as you might normally see in an area control due to there being not very many areas in the first place giving some nuance there saying that there is going to be more skill and not just pure numbers based control how do you feel about this? How heavy miniature is it going to be driven? Those are really the questions. And if they're giving us this, I have to imagine that there are going to be expansions galore going with it. Uh, they have not gone the Blood Rage route very much recently. I just look at this and I go, this is prime for another board sitting next to it right here, right? And I just look at it and I go, oh, geez. How miniature heavy is it going to be? Uh... We'll see when it launches. Next up, also staying with Simon here, is a zombie side flip and right, roll and right esque, if you will. Now, you can make the argument that maybe they're a year and a half to two years late based off of the wave and the trend that came out in 2020 as well as 2021, but we're going to see the latest iteration in the zombie side thematic incorporation with those mechanisms. The question is, does it flow? Does it work? And judging by this, it looks like it's going to be more of a retail than it is going to be from a crowdfunding standpoint. So we'll see how it holds up, where it compares, and just are they going to be doing something interesting and new with this version of a game or not? Now, going over to another company, but no less interesting, we have another combination of games mechanisms, and this is Terra Nova. If you want to get a game on the hotness, you just need to you know, put Nova in your title, apparently. But this is supposedly a more streamlined, going to be a more streamlined version of Terra Mystica. It's going to be making its debut in Essen around there so that you can see two to four players, 60 to 90 minutes, does this fit more with me? And yes, there is a niche and a calling for a game like this. You don't need to be playing only Terra Mystica and Gaia Project. This is a great way to get people introduced to a little bit of a heavier game in a more streamlined manner if they can hold up the mechanisms and the nuances without losing too much at the same time. I played Dominant Species Marine this past week comparatively to dominant species that I have not played. It is apparently the more streamlined, a little bit less mechanically complex, but also plays well at lower player counts, much more than its predecessor. And I would argue that just like with that, there are definite places for that to get more people incorporated into games and mechanisms like that in the first place. And yeah, it's going to be hit or miss in terms of making them want to make the next jump to something heavier. But this is completely fine to play too, and I'm really excited to see what this brings, because 
a year ago, I wouldn't have looked at this with a second thought, and now I'm seriously interested. So that's coming out from Capstone Games. Speaking of upcoming games as well, this is from Fantasia Games. This is called Flow. It's fallen off the hotness lately, but it was on the hotness a week or two ago. And this is important because this is the same company who is bringing us the upcoming, soon-to-be production-released Endless Winter, the deck builder worker placement style game. Now, this is going to be slightly different as well because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be drawing tiles from a shared bag placing them onto, you know, the map, essentially, of what you're making, and using those tiles to navigate, to upgrade your heroes, to gain powerful quest items, or to complete heroic sigils, which are going to be required in order to win the game. Now, this is a one to four player game. So again, just like with Endless Winter, they're emphasizing the solo aspect. So you have not been forgotten if you are a solo player. And uh, tile laying, shared bag pulling, I am very interested in this as someone who was not terribly interested in Endless Winter in the first place. Fantasia Games putting out something very interesting. We'll see where this goes, but this probably isn't going to be launching on Kickstarter or crowdfunding, my guess, is until at least 2023. And I believe that's what they've said in line with projections at this point. Speaking of upcoming games but not crowdfunding, we have a new Title Blades straight-to-retail game called Banner Festival. Now, why are we talking about Banner Festival? Because this is a departure, again, in the Title Blades world, but it is more of a trick-taking style of game where the number and the suit will determine the order and the action that you are taking in the first place. There is a little bit of information out. I believe a couple channels have already had reviews. It's up for pre-order as well currently. And if you're really interested and you are a big fan of the Title Blades world in the first place, check it out. But beware, again, trick-taking seems to be a divisive element and mechanism overall. So it may be for you, it may not be. Now, it's been quite a while since I last talked about this, when all three second editions were announced of the Great Western Trail, and finally some more details of Great Western Trail, the Argentinian version, have come to light. Now, they're taking the same mechanisms that you may know and love or not from the original Great Western Trail, your deck building, your rondel, upgrading your player board, and even a new type of worker called farmers. You can maybe even shortcut your way to getting your cattle where you need to, but you may lose actions or buildings along the way to compensate for said shortcut in the first place. Money's easier, but there are going to be something called exhaustion cards that are going to make uh, you have to choose and spend it a little bit more carefully. And there is going to be a dedicated solo mode for, again, all of you solo junkies out there says S and release of 2022. So we'll see, you know, how hyped people are come three or four months from now and what the talk of the town is when people have more hands-on experience. Next up, a game that got put on the map after Shut Up and Sit Down had a glowing review of it, and this is Red Cathedral. They have recently announced that Red Cathedral is going to have a new expansion, and in this expansion, it is going to be called Contractors with 10 new guilds that are going to be in it, and they say that there is going to be almost as much content in the expansion as there is in the base game itself. A contractor module with a new map of Russia included, Area Majority, Rondel-based Euro game. If those things sound good, I recommend that you go check the Shut Up and Sit Down review or many of the others that are over on Board Game Geek. Personally, I have no interest, but I know a lot of you who enjoy this type of game, hearing that there is more content, more varied ways to be able to play, especially with the three different cards in each guild that are going to offer you uh, potentially 30 ways or 30 variations to play just with the new expansion alone included. There you go. Now, a while back, I also talked about the new iteration, the Vincent Dutrait art for Quest for El Dorado that is currently being uh, published and available in Europe. However, in my recent perusing of the forums of this game, there came the revelation that there's going to be another expansion called Dangers and Musica. And it's going to be the same size as the previous expansion, Heroes and Hexes. They have a picture down here below, Dangerous Areas, Rapids, swamps with crocodiles and everything else in between it's translated from the dutch website and you can see mountains with risk zones as well as having to go through temples to find artifacts that will open the gate there's also the mysterious musica tribe ready to potentially help you it comes with two separate modules that can introduce the new terrain tiles dotted with those danger zones where you're not allowed to end your turn also new terrain types uh well crocodiles well you got to be careful with crocodiles and the musica introduces the musica cards that can be bought from the market tableau and instead of playing them in normal you put them in front of you so you can use them on a future turn instead so aligned with the new art style definitely going to be keeping a watch on this one and how it interacts with the other expansions that are already out there. 
Why am I going over to the business wire for the last news? Because literally on the day of filming this, this was announced that Funko has acquired Mondo. Now, Mondo, you may know, is associated with Restoration Games, or Restoration Games is under that uh, umbrella, essentially. And the big concern was, how is that going to affect some of Restoration Games' properties? And the big one being Unmatched. Now, they have come out on Twitter already today saying that Restoration Games owns all of the rights and all of the distribution and just whatever it is with Unmatched. So if you are concerned about how it's going to affect that product line, Fear not, because apparently it will have no effect on it whatsoever. Will there be more products? Will there be more collaborations? How is that going to affect other product lines? We'll see, because time is really too early to tell, just since this has been announced. Now, next up, I came across this right before it got announced, right before people got to test it over at the UK Expo, and I believe even maybe Origins, and this is War of the Ring, the card game. I've never been able to play. I haven't even owned a copy of the original War of the Ring, but potentially, again, talking about more accessibility, a card-driven system for War of the Ring, Lord of the Rings, which is one of my favorite IPs, this is potentially game-breaking. Now, it says two to four players there, which, again, makes me a little skeptical because I think it's really a two-player game that you can play as a team of two later on that doesn't quite emulate it quite as much as I would like. But details are a little bit sketchy. It's going to be a self-contained game. This is not an LCG. This is not a CCG. This is a card game driven, just a card driven version of the other game, literally. It's just how easy is it going to be actually to get to the table? How much more accessible is it going to be? Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot more reading, a lot more text, whereas the other game has a lot more just internalization of the rules and the nuances in the first place. So I'm really, really, really interested in this. This is all of a sudden vaulted up my wish list. They probably won't be out before the end of the year, knowing how things sort of run time-wise with Ares games. But you've got to be kidding yourself if I'm not going to give this one a hard look-see when it comes out and comes to fruition at the retail aspect. So that's why it's first. Next up is Star Wars Outer Rim, the expansion for it, uh, entitled Unfinished Business, aptly so. This is offering more of a good thing from this pick-up-and-deliver trade, more economic-esque Star Wars game where you get to play as your favorite bounty hunter. Essentially, more of everything. Two new terms, favors and ambitions, as well as allowing you to cross the core worlds in order to get from place to place faster. Character ships, bounties, jobs everything in between that you might be interested in supposedly going to just make the core better jury's still out though because i believe that pre-orders are just being delivered uh, about now so we'll see kind of where it falls in the next month or two and how quickly or how much it stays on the hotness and the hype train so far next up Castles of Burgundy. It's ending shortly after me filming this video, the special edition over on GameFound from Awakened Realms. Over two and a half million euros at this time funded, and it's going to cost you about 120 bucks shipped to get this new edition with a bunch of expansions and a bunch of deluxifications. 21 days worth of stretch goals here, and the whole why back it now to get it at a better price? Lots of miniatures, lots of stretch goals, big, big, big Color, 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 beautiful, 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 aesthetic, 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 new gameplay expansion that's never before been played, and it looks awesome, and I'm also going to pass on it because I just, I just can't. I just can't. As a non-Euro, this is probably not how I'm going to break my Euro version buying something this expensive as a hit or miss. Now, if I was a betting man, if I was a value person, I mean, yes, this is going to be a good value. No one's going to argue the value. Value is really getting a lot easier to tell nowadays on crowdfunding. I don't think that requires as much uh, discernment. But is it for you or not? If you can't get it played, if you have another $120 game that's just going to sit on the shelf, I can buy three $40 games that I can get to the table a lot easier and a lot sooner. And just, you know, with a lot more people. So... It's going to be interesting to see where this one falls afterwards, how the comparisons are made. Are the new expansions really that much better? And if it's one of your favorite games, great. But if it's not, is this going to change your opinion? That's the big unknown right now. Next up is My Father's Work, uh, T.C. Petty III's latest game. And this one is being delivered to backers as well. More of a heavy Euro worker placement style game set over several generations where you are creating mad scientist-like uh, aberrations and projects trying to do the best over several iterations or generations. Now, this is going to be more in line based off early reactions, the depth and the complexity and the length of a Mind Clash game rather than something like, say, 
previously mentioned Castles of Burgundy. Now, again, not as a bad thing, but just as a FYI, if this is your type or not. Personally, again, way too heavy for me. Way too heavy, and that's okay. But there's a lot going on with this game. I've heard initial reactions are, you know, very pleased with what they're getting, but I I think it's really going to be a niche crowd. And if you're happy with this deluxified Euro, there's not going to be a shortage of them coming to crowdfunding in the future. I would imagine that if it really does well, we'll see a reprint. So if you have any interest, check it out. Also, ending very, very shortly after me filming this is ARCS. Leader Games' big hit, well over a million dollars over on Kickstarter. The campaign-ish three-session game for three to four players with a trick-taking element with upgradable tech tree and uh, empire building, if you will. It's really gotten mixed now that people have been widely playing it on Tabletop Simulator. What do I mean by that? I mean that you have 95 people that have enough gall to, after playing it on Tabletop Simulator to already rate it and it's got a 7.2 rating. How does that make you feel? It doesn't really do anything for me. The player count is going to be the most difficult here, 3 to 4, but I'm in on it right now. So we'll see if that changes before the end. But I have a feeling it's going to be a divisive game, just like Root, just like Oath. I don't think they're vastly different in that aspect, even though the mechanisms aren't similar either. But you need to know what you're going into. And that is the biggest thing I always say about leader games. If you don't know what you're going into, if you're not being aware of what you're going into, well, then you aren't going to like it. But if you are, there's a higher chance that you will. But it's definitely, again, not for everybody. Speaking of other Kickstarters, uh, deluxified Euros that are being delivered, this is Carnegie. It's also on the hotness because people are really pleased with it and enamored with what it's putting out there from a deluxified Euro standpoint. You're trying to become the best philanthropist that you can over 20 rounds, taking one action with the ability to follow other people's actions in the first place. Heavy game, deluxified. There's a theme, there's a trend going on with this nowadays. And how do you feel about that? Because there's a lot going on in this relatively complex, deeper Euro style game. Now it's already in the top 1000 on the board game geek because it already has 1900 ratings, which is insane for a game that hasn't really been delivered for that long. So we'll see where it ends up, how it compares to other Euros and other heavy games like it. Again, this isn't my area of expertise, so I can't speak too much to it. People seem to be very pleased from it from the get-go, so we'll see how it stands up to the test of time and if people are talking about it a year or two from now. Last up here, we have Pagan Fate of Roanoke, which is supposed to be launching a second run printing of its Kickstarter now that it has been delivered, and we're going to see sort of how it stands up. Speaking of test of time, as the early comparisons for more of a social deduction mixed with a Netrunner vibe are working in this two-player game set in sort of the Salem witch trial era where you're trying to catch the witch or perform your ritual before being caught. Now, they say it's an expandable game, meaning there are about three or four expansions, one large and about three small ones to go with the original offering, but right now it's not available anywhere in North America. You can find it very sporadically over in Europe, hence the reason for the second printing. Two written reviews over on Board Game Geek are heavily comparing it to more of a Netrunner feel with more of a deduction aspect of going through several locations as you would go through several of the corporations or the servers in Netrunner from that aspect. If you're interested, I'm supposing it's probably going to be actually already launched by the time this video airs, so I'll probably be talking about it as well on the crowdfunding roundup with more details. It came onto my radar. I actually tried to look, and that's how I know that it's not anywhere available in North America. And I am going to be looking at it very heavily when the second campaign runs. There you go. That is the news and the hotness all in one right now. So hopefully in the near future, I will have the set final setup complete for the new studio with the overhead cam and everything else in between with some HDMI, with some 1080p and all the other stuff in between. So we'll see where that goes. It was an expensive month. No lie with some of that stuff. But you know what? That's okay. I like talking about board games and uh, I want to bring you a better product. So there you go. If you like this video, thumb it and let people know uh, that you liked it in the first place. Thanks for watching. Uh, as always, let me know what you're interested in. Which of these games caught your eyes? Which of these had you known about? Which of these are new to you? And how do you feel about them already? Because like I said, several of them are definitely already on my wish list, and that's both a blessing and a curse at the same time. So we'll go from there. That's all I got. Have a great day. Stay classy. See you around. I have a Patreon as well if you want to help me out. Always supported. Always interested. Always grateful. Thank you.